Next on Worcester News Tonight, the Puerto Rican community hold a rally downtown celebrating the governor of the island stepping down. Plus, the 16-year-old is facing charges after he allegedly stole a hearse from an area funeral home and crashed it. We have the details. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. After nearly two weeks of protests, the governor of Puerto Rico has announced his resignation. Earlier this week, Worcester was one of the cities to take part in the protests, calling for the governor's job. Now the area's Puerto Rican community is celebrating. Our Cam Jandro has the story. Worcester's Puerto Rican community began the week protesting in solidarity. <laughs> Friday, they ended the week in celebration as Governor Ricardo Roseo announces his resignation. We feel that we are doing something for our island too, because we are not there, but we're still here, and we're doing the fight too from here. Roseo will formally resign on August 2nd. The news is weighed off the shoulders of Eduardo Torres, who lived on the island until Hurricane Maria devastated it. Finally, we, we feel that our voice has been heard, and for all the situation that's happening in Puerto Rico, and finally we, we won this. We Roseo is facing numerous federal corruption charges. He's also facing backlash after derogatory online chats featuring his texts were leaked. Dozens celebrated in front of City Hall before taking off in a caravan down Main Street. And it was also a moment of pride, and it was a moment of unity, like we were one with the people in Puerto Rico and the people around the world who supported us, so it was such a great victory. It's awesome also because we just see the results of how a democracy really works. So I think we set a great example to America. Some in Worcester's Puerto Rican community say Roseo's resignation is a chance for the island to have a fresh start. We're still rebuilding the island uh, and still a lot of job to do too, still. Now, current Secretary of Justice in Puerto Rico, Wanda Vasquez, is expected to take over as governor on August 2nd. Some of the protesters we spoke with today say they don't want Vasquez taking over as governor, so these protests may not be over just yet. In Worcester, I'm Cam Jandro, Worcester News Tonight. Now to an update on the construction being done for the future home of the Worcester Red Sox. While there doesn't appear to be much happening yet, the city says infrastructure work is underway. Friday, a CERB Pro technician was testing water at the site of Polar Park and says it's a step needed before major construction. However, Paw Sox President Dr. Charles Steinberg says they have some stuff planned for the space on Madison Street. We want to now bring children out to the park. Actually, it's a parking lot. Uh, and plant the plate and lay the bases. And uh, we hope to do that uh, before too long, maybe a week from Monday if all goes well. Construction of the ballpark is expected to begin sometime this fall. The Leicester Fire Department responding to a two-alarm fire tonight. Leicester Fire Chief Robert Wilson says flames started in the attic of the house. Auburn, Spencer, Paxton and Charlton Fire Departments responded. Chief Wilson says tongue and groove wood sheeting made it difficult for firefighters to get to the flames. Because of the concealed space we're applying it into, we ain't open up the roof and find it. So that's another good half hour to get where we consider it fully under control. The cause of the fire is still unknown at this point. The House passing the Greenworks bill unanimously this week, which would make significant investments to local infrastructure to help fight climate change. The legislation would see more than a billion dollars go into cities and towns across the state. The changes in infrastructure would help reduce the amount of greenhouse emissions and make towns more resilient. State Representative David LaBeouf says climate change is a legitimate concern for state legislators whether it be municipal microgrids, making sure that um, they have electric vehicles in their fleets, and also dealing with some of the um, challenges that we face in infrastructure because of climate change that's been happening. There's really a general consensus that it is happening, that we need to do something about it. The bill will now go to the Senate. Northridge teens are facing some charges after police say they took a joyride in a stolen hearse. 
The funeral home has been forced to make changes to their operations and says the incident is disrespectful and upsetting. Chandler Walsh has the story. A stone wall is wrecked and a Northbridge funeral home is down a hearse. Gerald Jackman says two teens stole one of his vehicles early Thursday morning and crashed it down the street. I would like to think that um, people would be a little more respectful and reverent, but you know, it's, it's a modern world now and I don't, I don't know what was going through kids' minds. Jackman says the vehicle is a minivan used to transport funeral flowers. He says his fleet is housed in a garage, but this vehicle was temporarily locked in the driveway. This one had an issue with the emergency brake, so our mechanic was going to go over there and work on it. That's why it was outside in the parking lot. And um, I don't know how they got in. I don't know how they started it. Police say a 16-year-old was driving about 60 miles per hour and drove straight through a stop sign. Sheila Brennan lives nearby and says it's not the first time someone crashed into the wall. About a year ago, a construction truck had, that was in there working and that smashed into part of the wall. The teens are facing charges. The driver suffered serious injuries but is expected to be okay. Some in town say the teens' actions are disrespectful above all else. I can't believe that they would have been able to even find a hearse or to get it. That's so unusual. It's the summer months. Um, Kids might have too much time on their hands, and this was something that they were looking to do to pass the time. Jackman will be relying on his other vehicles and help from nearby funeral homes, but says the ordeal is disturbing. You know, you think a lot of people would be creeped out or um, a little hesitant to take a vehicle from a funeral home. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. A Spencer man has been deemed too dangerous for bail after an alleged armed carjacking and struggle with police back in November. According to the Worcester County District Attorney, 28-year-old Donald Foy has been ruled dangerous and held without bail for up to 180 days. Foy allegedly sped off from a traffic stop in Webster, leading police on a chase up I-395 to Worcester. The Spencer man is facing a long list of charges, including armed assault with intent to murder, multiple counts of assault and battery on a police officer, and carjacking. Foy is due back in court September 6th. A bill sponsored by 1st Worcester District Senator Harriet Chandler unanimously passes banning child marriage. The Senate passed the bill, which mandates Massachusetts not allow anyone under the age of 18 to marry, regardless of parental consent. The current law allows a marriage license with parental consent. A local professor has made some big discoveries about the Armenian Genocide. Clark University history professor Tanner Akcham discovered two Turkish telegrams and a letter, which refer to a decision to exterminate groups of Armenians. The documents were written in 1914 and 1915. 1.5 million Armenians were systematically killed during and after World War I. Akcham says his findings show there was a conscious decision to annihilate the Ottoman Empire's Armenian population. Turkish government over decades has claimed and still claims that there is no one single original Ottoman documents clearly show the genocidal intent of Ottoman authorities, and here they are. Akcham was able to ma match the signatures on the documents to Ottoman politician Bahadin Shakir. Veterans Inc. helping out a fellow veteran with a special gift. After falling on what she calls personal hardships, Navy veteran Brittany sought out services through the organization. With a place to stay, she was still without a car until today. Veterans Inc. chose Brittany as the recipient of a vehicle donation. She says she's grateful for the gift. It's nice, it's beautiful, it's um, a lot, it's big and um, it's definitely enough room for me and my kids. Veterans Inc. says there is an application process each veteran must go through before consideration. They're asked questions like what they would use the car for and how, what it would do to change their lives. The committee says after reading Brittany's application, they felt she'd be a good match. It'll change her life immensely. Uh, many veterans have doctor's appointments that they have to be at for their health and their mental health and all our veterans would need cars and this is going to change her life with her two children. The Vehicles for Vets program started in 2009 and accepts cars 10 years old or less with under 150,000 miles.